Ever since gliding was invented, we've been having one particular accident repeatedly that hasn't actually reduced in time. This is the accident or incident where pilots or owners misrig their gliders. They think when they take off, everything's connected and working correctly, and much to the horror, when they get off the ground, they find something's not working the way it should be. One of these items that occasionally gets uh, misunderstood is how Viedekin connections work on gliders fitted with hotelier fittings. The hotelier fitting is the ball and socket joint that actually connects quite often a flap, airline or air brake to the control system in the fuselage or actually in the wings as well or elevator. When it's not connected properly, you might you lose the use of that control. A lot of people don't realise it's possible to misconnect them. So using the Vidikin system, it's possible to have the ball half in the socket, so it still works. But when a vertical load is applied to the fitting, it can come undone. And in the following pictures and videos, what I want to do to you is help you understand how it's possible to misconnect a Vidikin fitting and how to spot that misconnection before you actually go and fly your glider. A typical 40 year old push rod. On the left hand side you've got the push rod, it's got a ball on it that plugs into the socket and if you go to the right further you see a plunger that goes up and down that actually locks the ball into place and then to the right of that plunger you've got a large aluminium sleeve which is actually an aftermarket product fitted to the hotelier in the late 80s uh, that slides along and you can see there's a small gap between the plunger and the sleeve itself. And this indicates that when the ball is in place, it's fully locked in place. In this slide, we can see that the ball of the hotelier coupling is not fully inside the socket, but it has been clamped by the socket. So although it's not fully connected, this will actually work. The control will go up and down, the control effect will be correct, and this would pass a positive control check. And if you only ever look at these fittings from the top, and often at poor access is the only option you can, you cannot see that the ball is not fully home. So what else tells us the ball's not fully home? Well, first of all, the plunger, uh, which is just the right of the picture, um, still has quite a lot of um, the plunger sticking out the bottom, which means the ball is actually pushing the plunger inside that socket in a bit, stopping the plunger actually locking into place. Because the plunger has too much metal protruding from the bottom of it, you can see the sleeve on the right hand side can no longer slide over the plunger. So this isn't actually locked, and this could fly for easily an hour or so before you hit some turbulence or bumps or something like that, before eventually a, v a vertical load on the socket upwards would actually disconnect the control altogether in flight. Here we have the same joint you saw in the other picture, but this time looking down on top of it. And as you can see, it's not so obvious that the ball is only halfway in. And also, it's not so obvious that the plunger is actually not as far down as it should be. But what is fairly obvious is you can see a big gap between the plunger and the sleeve and it exposes quite a few of the threads on the Vedekin fitting system. Now, every single Vedekin fitting is individually fitted, so that gap will not always be the same. So you need to learn your own individual glider to see how big these gaps are. The other thing of note is you can see this is not connected correctly when you know what you're looking at. The other thing to do is pull up on the socket itself and if the ball's only half in, it should literally just pop out as soon as any upward vertical load is pulled on that. What follows next are three short videos using a push rod from a glider that actually became disconnected in flight after one hour. It had been partially rigged in other words, the ball was only half in, half out of the socket. And what we were able to do is put it on a different type of glider with the same size hotelier ball and actually simulate the partial connection. 
and in these three short videos you will see that the push rod operates normally. We're able to use the push rod to drive the control in this other glider and it goes up and down. All the total tractions are correct and for all intents and purposes if you're the pilot of this glider you would think it's connected. But you'll notice as soon as we put an upward load on the push rod it just tings off and becomes disconnected. Okay, give us a resistance like a positive control check. Just hold it, I'll do it. you hold it, I'll move it. Yeah, there you go. and just click it off. Okay, just hold it there. That's it. About two knots. I, I came down because I was doing air x -ray. Okay, so and then take it off, just knock it up, that's it. In this next slide, you can see data from the British Gliding Association collected between 1974 and 2014 on gliders that essentially weren't fit for flight when took off because something wasn't rigged correctly. And not all of these, in fact only a very small proportion of these, was caused by reading connectors. But nonetheless, it shows a general misunderstanding, more often not by the person flying the glider, that they didn't fully understand how their control systems work in the glider or they were distracted from doing them up properly before they took off and didn't have the uh, wherewithal to check them thoroughly prior to flight. So, what do we do about reading connections in particular? First of all, understand how they work. Connect them, disconnect them. Actually look at how it's possible to misconnect them and how would you spot a misconnection? Try and fully understand the system for your individual gliders on individual controls. After you've connected the control, visually check the sleeve is locked. Visually check the connection is not a partial connection by applying a pull force on the socket away from the ball to ensure it's really locked in place. Be very careful here whilst applying this force to not put your fingers on the plunger or the sleeve because that might actually cause a control disconnect. Duplicate inspections. After you've connected the control and you've checked it yourself, it's fully in place with Paul, get somebody else to have a look at it as well. They're looking for visual inspection and a pull inspection. If this person does not know how your system works, train them on how it works so they can make a fair assessment from whether you've connected correctly or not. And finally, once you've done that, a positive control check where you have somebody in the cockpit moving the control and someone on the control checking it's fully connected and they're checking for free play, it's, correct, it's moving in the correct direction and the approximate movement seems right in terms of uh, up and down. Typically an aileron will move two times up to one times down. After all that, you should be fit for flight.